Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, God talked with Adam and Eve. Dr. McLuhan shares how God came looking for Adam and Eve while they were hiding from him in fear. Last week, we learned that we were born to hear God's voice, and that's very good news. Today, we'll discover a clear contrast in the relationship between God and Adam as found in the Quran and in the Bible. This message reveals the heart of God and what we can expect in our relationship with him. It is interesting to note that scientists have concluded that human beings can be traced back to a single genome. The Bible and the Quran call that person Adam. Muslims believe that the Garden of Eden was not on earth but in paradise. The Quran and the Bible both teach that Satan tricked Adam and Eve into eating forbidden fruit. The Quran says, Then Adam and his wife both ate of it, and their evil inclinations became manifest to them, and they both began to cover themselves with the leaves of the garden. Adam disobeyed his Lord, and his life became evil. That's the 20th surah and ayat number 121. Now, how God responded to the sin of Adam and Eve in the Quran and in the Bible is very different. According to the standard Islamic narrative, Adam and Eve wept for 40 years, and then Allah forgave them. And even though Allah forgave them, they were still thrown out of the Garden of Paradise. Islamic tradition says that Adam was thrown down from paradise to Sri Lanka, That is that tiny island at the tip of India, sometimes referred to as the teardrop of India. And to this day, pilgrims visit a place on the island that is called the Mountain of Adam. They travel there to see what they believe is the footprint that Adam left in stone on the top of that mountain when he landed there. Eve, whom Muslims call Hawa, is the mother of mankind was thrown down to the present-day Iraq, and Allah separated this married couple by more than 3,000 miles. Remember, there were no other humans on earth at the time. So how would Adam know whether to go north or south or east or west? Well, according to the tradition, they eventually reunited near Mecca, where according to the views of Islam, both of them died and were buried. Muslims say that Adam was over 50 feet tall, and they believe it was no problem for him to walk from Sri Lanka all the way to Saudi Arabia in search of Eve. And even though the Quran says that Adam's life became evil, Islamic scholars teach what they call the doctrine of disposition, or in Arabic, the doctrine of fitra. And this doctrine teaches that the descendants of Adam and Eve were born in a state of purity with a leaning towards knowing Allah. And Adam is identified as the first prophet in Islam. It is important to know that Muslims believe that none of the prophets sinned. The contrast between Adam in the Quran and Adam in the Bible is clear. According to Muslims, Adam was sinless and did not need a savior because a coming messenger will point him on the right path back to God. Now, the Bible records the beautiful story of how God created Adam, not from the gold of heaven, but from the dust of the earth. God blew into the nostrils of Adam, and he became a living being. What a beautiful picture of God stepping down from the splendor of heaven to create a person from the earth that he created. God made Adam to reflect his nature and his character. This means that God hears, God sees, God thinks, God feels, God knows, God hears, and God understands. And who we are is a reflection of who God is. He made us to have a relationship with him. God created Eve from the rib of Adam and presented him to her as a complementary companion for life. And since the dawn of creation, God has visited the planet that he made for us to inhabit and to steward. 
Now, God tasked Adam with naming the animals he created. Now, the Bible is clear that God brought to Adam all of the a- animals and the birds, and, that, and he brought them to him to name them. What a tremendous responsibility. Can you imagine the conversation and the hours that they spent together talking about animals and what they should be called? This exchange shows how important it was to God to have a personal relationship with Adam and for Adam to have responsibility over the earth that God placed him in. One of the reasons that God asked Adam to name the animals was to help him understand the value of having meaningful relationships. At this point in the process, God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper just right for him, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 18. Adam was designed by God to need two things, especially that I'll emphasize today. Adam needed a relationship with God, and he needed a relationship with other human beings as well. The Bible tells us that Adam and Eve had an open relationship with God and with each other. This intimacy with God is expressed in this unusual sentence, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 25. Now the man and the wife were both naked and felt no shame. What an extraordinary statement. There was a a remarkable transparency between Adam and Eve and God. There were no hidden thoughts or impure motives in their relationships. Their hearts were open towards each other. In another place we read that God used to come in the cool of day and have a conversation with Adam and with Eve. What a beautiful experience this must have been. Imagine God saying to himself, I think I'll go down and have a conversation with my friends. Think of God as picking fruit with Adam and Eve and eating with them. Who said God can't eat? Of course he can. The Bible talks about the great banquet in heaven And the Quran portrays paradise as a place filled with wine and merriment. The Bible says that God gave Adam and Eve one restriction in the garden that he had made for them. You may freely eat of the fruit of every tree of the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For as you eat that fruit, you surely will die. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. God was speaking about immediate spiritual death and then ultimately about physical death. Satan, who had already been thrown out of heaven for rebelling against God, came into the Garden of Eden in the form of a serpent to tempt Adam and Eve into eating the forbidden fruit. His tactic worked. Satan distorted what God actually said to make Adam and Eve feel like God was cheating them out of something or holding back something that they should have had. The result was that Adam and Eve lost their innocence before God. And after the fall, the first time in their lives, they felt shame and tried to hide themselves from God. I just love God's response. He didn't get angry. He didn't get mad. He came looking for them, to offering a way for them to be restored. We read, then the Lord called to the man. He said, where are you? And he replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid and I was afraid because I was naked. Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Notice with me, nothing changed for God. He kept pursuing them. He did not see them as naked. He saw them as victims of an attack from Satan. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, and death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned, Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. In contrast to the Islamic doctrine of disposition or fitra, the Bible teaches the doctrine of original sin. The children of Adam and Eve were not born in a state of purity, but with original sin inherited from their parents. And while God talked with them about the consequences that sin would have on them, he was eager to present them with a solution. 
First, he made clothes for them. Imagine God being your tailor. God made clothes from the skins of a lamb. A lamb was a temporary covering for their shame. But one day, another lamb would be slain who would be the covering for their sin. In Revelation, we read, You are worthy to take the scroll and break its seal and open it, for you were slaughtered, and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and tongue and nation. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9. God continued to talk with Adam and Eve about the solution he had for their sin. He said, I will cause hostility between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring, and he will strike you on the head, and you will strike his heel. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. It took me years to understand the meaning of what God said. Adam and Eve became metaphors for how God saved his creation from sin. In this passage, God is not speaking to Adam and Eve, but to Satan. He's telling Satan what will one day happen. The seed of the woman is that of all humanity. What God said is one of the earliest references to Jesus. One day Jesus would take on the form of humanity through being conceived as a babe in the womb of the Virgin Mary. We learn that Adam pictures for us that Christ will do for us on the cross by identifying himself as the second Adam or the last Adam. The scriptures tells us the first man, Adam, became a living person, but the last Adam, that is Christ, was a life-giving spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, aren't you so glad for the life-giving spirit in Jesus? Jesus was the last Adam who came through the womb of Mary. Satan will wound the heel of Jesus by having him crucified on the cross. But through his death on the cross, Jesus will crush the head of Satan. This is why he said, it is finished. And that word simply means, I won. And Jesus won a great victory for us over Satan on the cross. We read in Corinthians, for God made Christ who never sinned to be an offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. Aren't you so glad there's a way to be made right with God? Jesus is the life-giving spirit that provides the only solution able to cover the sins of all the people of the world. We invite you to bring your sin and your shame to Jesus. The Bible did not throw Adam and Eve from heaven to earth, but he forbid them from having access to the tree of life. The Bible says, after sending them out, the Lord God stationed a mighty cherubim to the east of the garden and placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth and guarded the way for the tree of life, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24. This was not a punishment. It was protection for an important part of God's plan of salvation. After sinning, Adam and Eve ate from that tree of life. They would never die and therefore would be eternally lost. And God did not want his relationship with Adam and Eve to be lost. He wanted it to last for all of eternity through faith in God's plan of salvation. Adam and Eve had a way to go to heaven and not to die. And how God deals with Adam and Eve is the pattern for the relationship that he wants to have with you and me. He loves us and wants us to be in a close relationship with him. Here's a verse that's been a great comfort to me. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. He knows our weakness. He remembers we are only dust. Psalm 103, verse 14 and 15. God formed Adam from the dust of the ground, and he made a plan through them for you and me to spend all of eternity in God's presence. Prophet Isaiah wrote, Come, let us reason together. Says the Lord, Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow, and though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. God wants you to talk to him, and he wants to talk to you. When Adam and Eve were sent away from the garden, 
They were not sent away from God's presence. They did not have a perfect family. The first family faced conflicts and hard times, yet God kept talking with them and with their children. And God wants to talk with you and me as well. Accept prophet Isaiah's invitation to talk to God. Isaiah went on to say God would send Messiah through a young virgin. He said her child will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. God wants to be with us. He wants to be with you. He foretold that Messiah would one day be crucified for the sins of the people of the world. We read, all of us like sheep have turned astray. We've turned away. We've left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord has laid on him, that is Jesus, the sin of us all. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6. This is why God is able to forgive people who turn to him for salvation. He can't forgive people who cried for 40 years. That doesn't work. Or 40 days, whatever the number is. He forgives people who admit their life has become evil. He forgives people who accept Jesus Messiah died for them in their place on the cross. And through believing in what Jesus did for us on the cross, we can have a close relationship with God. Ask him to forgive you for all the sins that you have committed. and Give you the gift of eternal life. Ask him to open your ears and hear his voice and fill you with his Holy Spirit. Father God, fill one, each one now with your presence who has prayed with me. You felt the presence of Jesus coming upon you. Write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Father God, thank you for loving us and always being ready to talk with us. Forgive us for times we run and try to hide from you. Thank you for making a way that we can live in your presence forever. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.